So now it's time to get started on the 86 SEI fuel injected go wing. I did get the electric fuel pump in and so what I need to do is find out why it don't turn over by the start button like I was showing in the last video that button's kind of rigged up on here and uh, it looks nothing like this button here so I'm going to swap out this handle uh, first I'm going to see well I know we don't have any uh, voltage going to the solenoid because uh, when you hit the start button it does nothing but I am going to swap out this handle anyway because it's got a good button and this one's got some kind of I don't know monopoly peg I don't know what that is I feel like it's not making any contact so I'm going to start by swapping that out and then we'll get it where it turn over make sure it's got fire which I don't know if it's firing at the plugs and then uh, we'll move on excuse me we'll move on to the fuel system I got the new aftermarket fuel pump that came in let's take a look at it now this is supposed to be a pump equivalent to the original pump like I said I found the original pump but they was like 300 bucks and I'm not ready to spend that on a fuel pump not no for this bike Thank you, that's the package. It looks like almost like an in tank car fuel pump. But it's not. So it's got the two uh, prongs on there where your wires connect. And you screw the fitting onto the back for the hose. So. which it comes with it comes with the little pad that you can mount it around something keep it from vibrating there's the wires the washers and that fitting it's made by Hermco Herco never heard of them but it, I was doing some research on some of the gold wing forms for these bikes and they were saying that you can use an aftermarket fuel pump because these are very hard to find now. I found one on eBay. Dude wanted like two ninety seven. It's supposed to be brand new, but uh, you know, no warranty. But it just mounts in this bracket, and you got a banjo hose. It's got a weird end on it. Uh. It kind of looks like a valve stem. The fuel comes out the middle of it. And this uh, screws down the banjo fitting. And that fits the fuel pump, the aftermarket one. And you hook your hose on the back side. I know that tank's got to be clean. So, but we can probably just hook a gas bottle to that fuel pump. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get this thing to turn over by the key, make sure, I mean by the button, make sure we got fire, and then we'll move on to the fuel system. That's the main thing, make sure we got fire and get it to uh, start without having to jump a screwdriver across the solenoid. So I took the handle apart and I found out why it won't start by the button because the button all the wires is broken off and they're broken off right here and they're broke off smooth and the button is just sitting in there we'll probably pull it out let 
you know, somebody sabotaged it or something. It was a screw missing out of the handle. I can't get it. There it is. Yeah. All those are cut. Maybe somebody sabotaged it. But this is the weird looking button they had in there. Well, anyway, we got the one off the other bike. It's all complete. So, I know it works because I ran that bike. So, what I got to do is get this harness. It runs down up under the uh, triple tree and back around. And it plugs right here. That's one of the plugs. This one plugs into the bike harness. So, we can put the throttle cables. Actually, I think I can just use the bottom of this switch. What is that in there? Spider hole? Probably can just take this cruise control button off. We won't have to worry about taking the cables off. And we can just do this one the same way. Well, no, well, then we have to break the whole thing down. But the cables come off there pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this disconnected and get the new one hooked up. But yeah, that's the reason why it wouldn't turn over by the start button. Because all that was broke. I don't know if they twisted it too far or somebody snipped the wires, sabotaged the guy. I don't know. The pieces are starting to come together a little bit. Alright, off camera, I did a lot of stuff. I got all the lower side panels off. I had to soak the spark plugs. They did not not want to come out. Those rubber boots that hose the plugs sealed, the plug wire seal, gets moisture in there. So I had to really get those out of there and they are super rusty. So. They've been in there for a long time. So got that out. I got the start button hooked up. I bumped it. It works. I squirted some uh, PB Blaster down in the spark plug hose. So uh, we won't be turning this thing over on dry cylinders. So i just been letting it sit there. Let that PB Blaster get down in the cylinder. Let's spin it over and let's check it for fire and see uh, if we got fire. And no star button works. Alright, let's stick a spark plug in it. Sparky do. Hopefully we do because I did see some more mice eating halfway through the wires. Uh, they were like down there and there where the coils go. So I don't know if maybe they went all with it. Don't look like they went all with you. But uh, let's go dark. Let's see. We can see some spark. Sparky spark. My hook is sparking. Now my rear lights are not flashing anymore. No fire. When I do that, the fuel system light comes on. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's it. No fire. Look at this. It's a baby spark. I mean, I don't know if you can even see it in the camera. Maybe I'm not getting a good... Brown or something. It's a baby spark though.
Yeah, it's fire. It's 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 a weak fire, but it is firing. But some reason, when I turn it on and off, oh, that's just turning the power off of the fuel pump. So yeah, it's got fire. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's it's like really, 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 really hard to see. See if I can see it through the camera. Yep. So let's check all. I'm pretty sure if it's firing on, because I think one coil has two spark plug wires. So I'm pretty sure if it's firing. I can tell it's firing on this one. Got no fire on that one. That ain't good at all. There's no fire coming out of that one. Let me see if we got fire here still. Got fire on that one is weak, but uh, this one might be this cap. Yeah, it's fire. It's the cap. It's got some weak fire though. I'm gonna go on the other side and uh, make sure we got fire over there. Well, at least we know the starter works now and the starter button. Like I say, my backlight stopped flashing on the on the luggage case there. Had something to do with that start button. I believe maybe the wires were touching. I don't know. They're not flashing anymore, so that's good because it was probably gonna run the battery down. Let's see if we make sure these. I don't know if y'all can see that from here. Kind of hard to see. Got fire on that one. Yep, so we got fire, weak fire, <laughs> it's not real, real blue, it's kind of dim, but it's, it's got some kind of fire, so I'm going to get some better plugs, I think I got some better plugs than those rusty ones, get those in there, and then we need to uh, come over here and see if we got any power going to the fuel pump I'm about to put this battery on charge because uh, once I put the plugs in it it's going to be just barely um, turn over probably 
Uh, let's turn the key on. The light up on the dash says fuel system when you turn the on and off switch on, so let's put it there. Let's see if we can hold the test light like that. Yep. See the test light? So we got juice going to the fuel pump. I heard the relay click. So we're good on that. We got fire. We got juice going to the fuel pump. I bet you the fuel pump. They said it wasn't no good. I feel nothing. So we're good in three areas. Start button, which is part of the ignition. Spark. And we got power to the fuel pump. So now it's got a fuel filter on the other side. I think I'm going to take it off and uh, probably going to have to, I didn't think to get one, probably going to have to uh, take it off and rinse it out. It's got a fuel filter right there. So it's probably got some bad gas in it. This looks like it might be a like, 5 eighths wrench. So we need to break that loose. See what comes out. Hopefully it's empty. fuel injectors because I don't know if the fuel injectors uh, they got some kind of screen in them it's going to be a two wrencher Is a seventeen or eleven sixteen. That looks like three quarter. Nope, that's a thirteen sixteen. Oh, what you put on there? My main concern is that gas tank. Funky. Figure that. Let's 
Okay, I'm gonna smell like that stuff too. Bust my knuckles wide open. Yeah. Kind of looks like a Honda fuel pump, like for a car. I mean, not pump. Uh, <coughs> That's gonna leave a mark. Damn, I bent the bracket. Well, there ain't nothing coming out of it. So that's uh it's empty. I thought at least a cup full of bad gas was gonna come out. So next we're gonna have to get the fuel pump. I checked the antifreeze, it's got plenty of cooling in it. I checked the oil, it's got plenty of oil, looks pretty good. So that's tight. So now we need to get some spark plugs in it and hook the fuel pump up and make some kind of uh, some kind of gas bottle. So I'm gonna do some more investigating on that tank and uh when we get everything ready where we can hook up some fuel try and fire this thing up okay so I got the fuel pump hooked up got our little temporary tank as usual uh, got the, some more spark plugs in it so let's go ahead and put some gas in it Now that's supposed to be a real, real high volume fuel pump. I think it's 30 PSI, what I read. Supposed to be high pressure. I've never heard of one that high pressure. I might be wrong, but. Let's just see. Probably have to put more gas in there. Let's just see will it even hit off without even spraying nothing at it. How that sound? You can definitely hear that feel, folks. You can 
definitely see the gas going to that clear tube. Then he had to spray nothing in it. Awesome, just awesome. So let's see what it crank back up. Over here. Woo. 
got some wire smoke coming from, looks like it's coming from the stator. That ain't good. Man, that gas is funky. It's got some wires. Man, it blue. Blue all kinds of stuff out exhaust. I didn't even see that. Blew somebody's home out the exhaust. Look at that. Somebody had a home in the exhaust and it blew it out. But uh, it was smoking from these wires over here. The stator wires. I think it's got a bad connection. I hope they're not touching or nothing. On all these bikes, these wires are cut. I think it's a bad connection right here. That is really hot. Unless it was grounding out. But it does run. But it spit out all that, whatever that is, <laughs> rat's nest, out of the exhaust. Let's, uh, let's just see what it... can't do it with one hand. Man, that fuel pump's working too. I'm just worried about those wires that's uh, smoking over there. Man, I gotta clean all this stuff up. <laughs> Smoking from there. I believe it's a bad connection. Injector. Let's do the pipe test. That one's cold. That one's cold. So it's not it's not doing anything on these two cylinders over here. It's only running on two cylinders. Could be these injectors sticking. Let me go to the other side. Hopefully, we don't have a wiring problem. 
going to the injectors. So them two cylinders over there are dead. And I'm believing it could just be the injector sticking. Uh, guess I could try. It stopped smoking from these wires though. Guess I can try tapping on them. It's definitely not doing anything over here. I don't know if he lost fire. Maybe that'll do it. Tapping on the fuel injectors. No, we have gas already. Man, this thing's a gas hog. <laughs> I believe it's got to be pressurized. Tank in your car, and I'm out of gas. Got to get some more gas. Alright, I got some more gas. I'm going to probably tap on the injectors a little bit and see what that does. Uh, I took the plugs back out, and it's definitely firing on. Uh, on this side over here but for some reason it's not uh, trying to get things right for some reason the injectors are not working I don't know if it's a wiring issue or the injectors are stuck exhaust so something that went up in there and built a big nest because I just swept the floor and it's already messed up again let's put some more gas in it this will be my last time
still kind of smoky. <laughs> it's empty again. Yep, she's out of gas. So, what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to hook up a better fuel system. I need to see where this antifreeze is leaking from. Hopefully. It's coming. It's dripping off of this screw. Is that water? I think it's water that's in this. Oh, it's just water that's in this. Uh, in this harness. That's all it is. For when we pressure wash it. So anyway, I'm gonna have to get a better fuel system hooked up. But it does run once it got uh, got the gas in it like it's supposed to. Starts to pick up. And we're still blowing rat's nest out of the damn exhaust, so that's probably going to be a while when all that gets burned out. But it runs, and that's what we want to hear. So I'm going to work on. Uh, getting this gas tank clean somehow without having to take it out try and put something in it uh, try and rinse it out it's got some real good rust right on the top like right around the ring right here I don't know if you can see down in there it's, it's dry but it's it's, it's going to need some attention before I hook it up. But it runs. And I didn't see a temperature uh, hand. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe there's a. And it was running. I didn't see it move. But I think the charging system's working because there's no battery light on. So I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy. It does run. There were no knocks. We got a little smoke just because I put out that PV blaster in it. So I'm going to just call it a night and 
we'll sleep on the gas tank situation and see what we can figure out with that tomorrow so it's the very next day I've been uh, working on the gas tank and I got it as clean as I could and I'll show you how I did it I was going to video it but I wasn't for sure if it was going to work <laughs> but I can see in there kind of hard to see in there you gotta get the light that's right but uh she's clean pretty clean and I hooked the fuel pump up back to the gas tank and I haven't ran it yet because I'm going to change the oil the only thing I did I got this uh drill bit extension you can put your drill bit in there if you're trying to drill something that you can't get the whole drill into and I put this little wire uh, wheel on there I took the fuel sending unit out and I just start cleaning inside the tank on the sides every uh, corner of it that I could get to and then I had this other little thing here which I haven't wore it out now it's just a wire uh, attachment you know it used to be kind of round but you see how it looks anyway after I took the sending unit out I was able to angle down inside the tank and I went in through this way on the walls the top I felt my hand in there my fingers it didn't feel rusty on the top but the sides and the bottom had some rust and the pet cot was stocked up so I blew air back up through the hose and it started working and all that funky gas start coming out so I got good flow down to the fuel pump and uh, like I say the tank looks pretty good in there I'm gonna try not to run it too low on gas it's still some flaky stuff but it probably will just uh, that gas will eat it up uh, hopefully it don't uh, stop up the fuel line inside of that fuel line it's like a little mesh filter that goes inside of it to keep trash from getting into the fuel pump so if it quits running I know that's stopped up but I'm gonna try not to run it low on gas so it won't get that flaky stuff down through the hose so I got some parts in this is This is the uh, center stand and the kickstand because you don't have uh, box grip. They double tape that side. They don't have a center stand and they don't have the right kickstand on it. The kickstand that's on it is too short. So a couple days ago, went on eBay, and ordered the center stand. So there wasn't no way I can change the tire or take the gas tank out because the rear tire has to be off the ground. So there was no way I can do that because it didn't have a center stand. The service stand, I guess they call it. Look at that thing for real, didn't it? So it should go back up under the bike. Now the parts bike we got, it don't have one either. So, it's got a kickstand, but it don't have a service stand. But I need, I need the service stand. Good gosh. They put it in a box with wrapping, and then they taped it together with packaging. 
So there's the kickstand. There's the center stand. There's the springs. They didn't give me a kickstand spring though. Well, I think one of them is a kickstand spring, and one of them is the center stand spring. But that's the pin that goes through it. So I can get that on, get this on, and I can work on it without it leaning. I got a piece of uh, board up under the kickstand because like I say that one it almost looks like the same stand but I just think it's too short it don't even have a spring on it but it's leaning way over when you uh, move that board out the way so now I can uh, get it up in the air I'm going to change the oil and oil filter and then I'll try and run it off the original uh, gas tank and uh, then we can move on to something else on it, like the brakes and uh, the clutch. And uh, be working on taking this thing for a cruise. Well, I thought I was going to be changing the center stand. And the only way you can change that center stand, you have to pull the mufflers off. Because that pin... Uh, that goes through the center stand. I got the oil draining right now. I don't know if we can see it. This part here, it's two of these. You got one set here, two on the other side. And that pin goes through those. But that pin, you gotta slide it in, and it lines up right where the muffler's at. So you have to drop the exhaust in order to slide that pin through the service stand which I'm not ready to drop the exhaust yet because soon if this thing runs good look at the tire slick I'm going to be changing the tire man this thing is dirty up under there too and uh, I'm going to have to take all this stuff off to change the tire including the pipes because you can't get the axle nut out because the pipes is in the way. So I'll just wait till I get ready to uh, change the tire because I'm probably going to have to heat these bolts up anyway. They look rusty. And uh, I'll drop the exhaust while I got the exhaust off. I'm going to have to put the service stand on so I can get the back wheel off the ground. So that's why I say I'm just going to wait till I'm ready to change the tire and then I'll worry about uh, dropping this, this exhaust. Right now I just wanted to run again, run on its own fuel power and uh, make sure you know we don't have any other issues. So looks like we might have a valve cover gasket leak in there. Let's see some oil. Might need to tighten up on those valve covers. Like I said this bike's been sitting for a long time, so uh -huh. so it had to be some stuff tightened up and checked out. So anyway, looks like the oil is almost finished draining. The oil filter is in this housing right here, so I'm gonna pop that off, put a new oil filter in, top it off with oil, and uh, we'll fire it up. And uh, hopefully it will run like it's supposed to. So I got the K&N Go Fast oil filter. This thing I hadn't had an oil change in forever. Just look at that oil filter. It goes right there. This is the housing. We got to put the new O-ring. Uh, there's an O-ring right there. It comes with the filter, and there's a big O-ring that goes in there. So get all that cleaned up. Get the K&N Go Fast 
air filter in, I mean oil filter, and uh, you're good to go. Looks like that's a KN401. So, O'Reilly's had one left on the shelf, and that box was dusty. So, nobody ain't been changing go wing oil filters around these parts, I guess. Alright, so we're starting off the oil and gas tank. Uh, I got one injector over here that's like tucked in and out. I don't know if you can hear it when it's running. You can hear it still when it's tucking in and out, but I always put a new spark plug in there. Every now and then, that injector, you can have your hand on it, you can feel the pulse go away. So I believe this injector right here is probably going to have to be changed out. But, keep your hand working. Gas gauge started working. I said I gotta fix the clutch master cylinder and the brake master cylinder for the front. I don't know if it's got rear brakes or not. Uh, I haven't tried them. I didn't really want to mess with them until I was ready to, uh, you know, ride it. I didn't want the brake to lock up and then I can't move it. But the pedal's free. And I gotta put a foot peg. It don't have any foot pegs. Yeah, it goes all the way down. They don't have any foot pegs. They took the foot pegs off. I think it had uh, those wide pegs on it, like like these, the floorboard things. These actually came off of that bike, and the foot pegs off the parts bike is on this bike. I couldn't get these to line up right. I don't know if they got bent or something. I was gonna try them on here, but I know it has this. Uh, shifter that you can downshift and upshift with but there's no foot peg so like I said I'm gonna try and see what those work I've been searching the internet high and low I can't find a stock set of foot pegs for nothing 
everybody's selling just the aftermarket uh, kind like those can't find a stock set so I would rather have a stock set on there because actually this fuel pump is supposed to be bolted right there and the foot peg goes through there and I think there's a cover in the back that goes over that fuel pump so but I'm going to keep tinkering around with it and uh, like I say get the clutch working hopefully it's just the master cylinder not the slave cylinder if it is uh, it's going to be a job to change out I just have to take it off the parts bike but I know the master cylinder the, the little eyeglass is broken on it where you can see your level for the brake fluid and uh, so it's no good I think the piston stuck in it but uh, that's going to be it for now on the go wing so I guess it will be a part three on this one uh, after I get it all uh, road worthy and uh, we'll do another video on it just slow motion with it I mean this one right here needed a lot more loving than the other one well I don't know I think they were both the same because the other one I had to put on two sets of carburetors but uh well, I gotta change the tire I mean it's they're just old bikes I mean they sit you gotta get them back going but but like I said I'm just gonna uh, gonna call it a night and I hope y'all having a good weekend and uh, just be looking forward to more gold wing action on the 86 SEI Aspen K. All right, I'll see y'all later. Now the fan's working. Even better. Alright, Charlie. Fine, Charlie.